so during last class we have discussed it, about it, various parts of aircraft so at that time you have studied the main components such as the fuselage f u s c l a g e fuselage or the main body of the aircraft then it is the wing and the tail part okay so in the fuselage you can see the pilot's cabin and the passenger's space so in the wing it is provided with various components so the wing consists of different flaps then ailerons and the wing is capable of adjusting its camber camber means the raised central portion okay so that portion can be adjusted so that it can have the velocity of air or the wind velocity varying besides the wing so that it can adjust its height on the air so uh, there is a peculiarity of the wing now it is the tail so on tail you can see various structures just like uh, the rudder then elevator and a stabilizer so we have studied uh, this three components also mainly these are used in order to rotate or turn so uh, we have then studied about uh, the various axes z axis then x axis y axis from the figure okay so actually it is not asked in university still just you have to study because of the airport characteristics it consists of three things just the terminal building runway and the aircraft okay so in the syllabus it's mentioned like that so you have to study three components at least in the base level okay so for the purpose you have discussed that and the, the figures will be added in the class notes so that you can refer for further studying okay so now we will move on to various aircraft characteristics this question is that much important because uh, two times it's asked for five marks so you have to study it in detail so here it's a complete theory portion you have to understand the concept that's all so the question is explain various aircraft characteristics so explain various aircraft characteristics and its uses in the design of the airport okay so the significance of various aircraft characteristics that is the so aircraft characteristics so this is a question this you have to study so here the aircraft characteristics consists of various factors of the aircraft various factors of the aircraft that determines the design parameters within the airport okay so here you can see various parameters just like the type of propulsion so you have to write that write down all this the types of propulsion type of propulsion then size of aircraft so size of aircraft then minimum turning radius minimum turning radius then minimum circling radius Cir circling radius after that it is a speed speed of aircraft speed of aircraft then it is a capacity capacity of aircraft of aircraft now weight weight and wheel configuration wheel configuration we have already studied 
field configuration then it is the jet blast okay and fuel spillage fuel spillage okay and finally it is a noise noise so we will discuss all these characteristics one by one so starting from the type of propulsion so what is this propulsion propulsion means in which method we are propelling this aircraft so uh, for this purpose we have to study four types of propulsion that is what we have stopped in the last class so the four types of propulsions are uh, one is the piston engine so using piston engine so basically how we propel this aircraft in order to propel there will be an engine so this engine powers the aircraft okay there will be fuel within the engine so uh, this fuel will combust or burn so while burning this fuel the chemical energy stored within this fuel will converted into thermal energy so this conversion is a rapid conversion so uh, a great amount of energy will be liberated in the form of heat so that heat energy is utilized in order to make the aircraft move so uh, that heat energy is converted into kinetic energy so in this kinetic energy the aircraft moves that is the energy change happening so here in order to propel we are having various methods and just i have explained and these are uh, piston engine so what is this piston engine you know how a motor vehicle works the engine of the motor vehicle consists of a piston and a cylinder so within this cylinder this piston is capable of rotating or uh, the not rotating uh, to and from motion so to and from motion means uh, the piston will go within the cylinder and it comes again out okay so it is freely to move like that at that time what will happen within the cylinder the fuel will come okay so okay now i hope it's okay okay can you see and hear yes if you cannot see just inform me okay so within the cylinder there will be the fuel and this fuel will get burned within that cylinder so in that way the cylinder will expand so uh, the volume of air within the cylinder will expand okay so at that time the piston will move out of the cylinder so then what will happen the piston will rotate a rod a rod which will be uh, rotated based on the movement of the piston so uh, this rod will be connected uh, to the wheel directly so that wheel also will get uh, rotated so that is the basic principle of working of the autom automatics or automobiles but uh, in the case of aircraft it should not be like that because uh, there should be a large amount of threshold or a large amount of energy then only the aircraft will fly otherwise it simply uh, gets moved within the ground okay so uh, here we have to use particular kind of fuel and uh, a engine with a large horsepower okay so at that time what will happen using the same principle the aircraft will fly that means using the same principle used in the automobiles the aircraft will also get fly so that is the first method that is a piston engine okay so but in the case of turbo jet what will happen so the second method of propulsion is the turbo jet so in turbo jet here uh, there will be a mechanism by which the okay i will draw it okay i hope you can see the screen okay actually it's 20 uh, 19 students only uh, so 
it should it should not be like this because once the class is going on it's conducted for you so there will be all the students and it's not at the time of attendance you should be here okay so here Okay, so the types of propulsions will vary based on the type of engine. So first one was piston engine. Okay, so that we have discussed. And now it's the turbojet. So here in turbojet, suppose this is the aircraft. Okay, this is the fuselage of the aircraft, and here there will be the engine. So what will happen? So the engine is capable of sucking in the So the engine will absorb the air which is present in front of the aircraft. Okay, so the air will get absorbed by the engine from the front side. Okay, so that uh, the front side will have a lesser pressure and the rear side will have more pressure. So what will happen? This vehicle will move from a region of higher pressure to lower pressure. That means towards the front side. Uh, I hope you hope you have got the idea. Here, what is happening? Just like it is the uh, you may be knowing the concept of this boat. Uh, boats will be running by using the jet engine. So, uh, what is the jet engine is doing here? So, in the case of speed boats, how the speed boats are navigating? Simply by sucking all the water which is present at the front side of the boat. So, the water from the front side will get vanished. Okay, so. Uh, it, this water, the same water will be expelled out of the boat from the back side. Okay, so then what will happen? So uh, there will be a region at which there is no water within the front side of the boat. So that the boat will tend to move towards the front side. So uh, that uh, continuous process will make the boat move continuously towards the front side. So the same principle is applied here. So uh, the air in front of the aircraft will sucked by the engine and it will be exhausted towards the end side okay or the tail side so that is what happening here so that is the turbo jet and what about the next uh, third one the turbo fan or turbo propeller in turbo fan or turbo propeller it is a modified version of this turbo jet here what is happening so here uh, the thing is that uh, the in the same way of this turbo jet the engine will suck the air from the front side of the aircraft and this sucked air will directly go to a propeller so it is not simply exhausting out of the uh, aircraft it is just going to a propeller and what this propeller is doing this propeller means it's a rotating blade just like a fan okay so this propeller will rotate by the jet of air so this jet of air will rotate this propeller and Due to the rotation of this propeller, the aircraft will move somewhat efficiently. So always the turbo fan or turbo propeller is a modified version of this turbo jet. Okay. So the third, okay, okay, we'll see in the screen. Okay, anyway, this is really an important question because two times it's asked so that you should be too much cautious while well, attending the class okay so okay all the points are important only but still you have to study based on the previous question because university is having a tendency of asking same questions okay so that is the difference between the turbo jet and the, the turbo fan okay turbo jet we have discussed it 
in turbojet if it is a aircraft then here there will be the engine and this engine will take all the air from the front and it will be exhausted towards the outside so there will be a region of lesser pressure and the aircraft will move towards this region okay that's all and in the case of turbo fan here what will happen here there will be a propeller and this propeller means on the elevation it will be like this there will be fans so this air will go in this direction okay so that will make the propeller blades rotate so that the navigation will be somewhat efficient so this part of the jet is also utilized effectively that is what happened in the case of turbo fan or turbo propeller what is a rocket engine so in rocket engine you may be knowing how the rocket is moving it is based on newton's third law okay so the rocket is a vehicle which is used in order to move the satellites satellites will be moved from the ground to the atmosphere by means of this rockets so in this rocket there will be engine okay so this engine what is doing it uh, actually there will be fuel okay so here two components will be there fuel plus oxidizer okay so uh, what is uh, happening here in the case of uh, uh, rocket engines here uh, the fuel will burn and uh, the burning process will be helped by the oxidizer okay oxidizer makes the fuel combine with the oxygen okay the fuel once it co combines with the oxygen definitely it will burn so oxidizer help this process so once the oxidizer is removed then the burning will be stopped okay so how it gets oxygen oxygen it directly takes from the atmosphere and once it's out of atmosphere then what will happen here uh, there will be a storage of oxygen within the rocket so once it's outside this atmosphere then uh, that storage oxygen will be utilized by the rocket okay so that is what happening but actually in the case of rockets there is no need of such a oxygen storage because once it is outside the atmosphere then it need not be navigated that is the thing that you have to note down here uh, once it's outside the atmosphere the functioning of the rocket is over so then that rocket will get burned because it successfully placed the satellite within its orbit so after that the rocket can burn so that uh, so for that purpose uh, there will not be any storage of oxygen but there might be some storage of oxygen if uh, it is having some engine trouble or something so uh, for safety purpose they will add some uh, oxygen storage but actually it's not needed in the case of this rockets because once it is in the atmosphere uh, once it uh, successfully reach the orbit uh, it need not be navigated further so but in the case of aircraft what is happening aircraft also using this same principle uh, here aircraft move horizontally that you know so here there will be the engine and this uh, here there will be fuel plus oxidizer plus oxygen so uh, here it will get burned and it will be exhausted like this so what will happen uh, due to the thrust the aircraft will move forward so that is what happening in the same principle of Air rockets so for example if you are having a balloon like this and if you release that balloon by simply inflating it so then what will happen the air will move like this and the balloon will move forward so this principle is used in the case of rocket engines so that you should know but uh, here there will be the supply of oxygen because uh, in different layers of the air there may be shortage of oxygen so at that time uh, it should use the stored oxygen so that you should remember so this is a for types of propulsion so based on this propulsion you should you should design the aircraft characteristics as well as the airport also especially in the runways the runways of uh, these rocket engines should be uh, properly maintained so that uh, the exhaust gases will directly comes in contact with the, the runway so that the runway will get deteriorated very easily so here the surface preparedness of uh, this uh, this type of rocket engine runways should be really important so that is the significance of the airport design based on this propulsion system so now it's the second point so i hope you may be remembering the second point it's the size of aircraft you have just initiated the discussion of the size of aircraft so at that time we have studied various components okay i will take that slide
Okay, so while discussing about the size of aircraft, you may be already remembering the factors that you have discussed. So it is the length in between the head to the tail. So uh, that is the length which is measured in the x-axis. Okay, so that length can be shown in the figure like this. Okay, so this length. So you may be capable of viewing the screen, isn't it? So in the screen, you can see this much length. So starting from here to up to the tail edge. So that is the length. And what about the wheel base? Wheel base, just like the automobiles, you can see from the front wheel midpoint to the midpoint of the back wheel. So if the rear wheel is a combination, if it's a wheel configuration, then what we will do? The center of mass or the center of gravity of the wheel configuration should be taken for measuring the wheel base. That you should understand. Okay. Minimum height you can see, it should be taken from the ground level to the tip of the tail. Okay. So uh, this is the minimum height. So these are the uh, external visible dimensions of the aircraft. Now, if you go front view, then you can see wingspan. So the wingspan measures in between the or the distance in between the two tips of the wings of the aircraft. So what about the wheel tread? Wheel tread means the width in between the two sideways wheels of the aircraft so that's the width now these are the dimensions and the tail width you can see from here okay so this all are directly observable from the class note i hope no further discussion is needed so these are the main dimensions used in the case of aircraft so if you're having any doubts while well, reading the class note then you can ask that's all so the wingspan then length of aircraft height of aircraft so uh, the uh, tread wheel base or wheel tread then all these are having significance in the case of design of the airport how uh, so in the case of airports uh, it will be having various components just like the taxiway then apron hangar etc so this will be discussed uh, during the next session just like uh, the hangar means uh, these are the storage houses of the autumn uh, of the aircraft for maintenance purpose and all so you may have view the hangers hangers means these are some truss building components uh, building components used by means of truss so uh, these buildings are capable of accommodating the aircraft and uh, the aircraft can be maintained so these are hangers then you are having apprents then taxiways so these taxiways will connect the runway to the terminal. Okay, so these are the intermediate runways uh, that is provided in order to reach the main runway. So taxiways are there, then apprents are there, then hangers. So design of all these, you should consider uh, the width, then uh, the tail width, then the wingspan, then the length, everything. Okay, so based on these dimensions, you have to decide the width, the length, etc. of various hanger, apron, etc. So that you have to remember. And after that, it's the 
radiuses. So here we are having two types of radii. So that we will discuss. It is the turning radius and circling radius. So what is the turning radius and what is circling radius? Here you can see. While the aircraft is in ground, then what is happening? So the turning radius can be measured like this. So here you can see if it turns, so then how it moves? If it is not turning, if it is undergoing a linear motion, then it will go like this. Okay, that you know, it will be going like this in this direction. But once it start turning, then what will happen? Here it is the wheel. Okay, so here the you can also see the wheel here, and this wheel starts moving like this. Okay, and this will move like this. Okay, so this way wheel will 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 execute a turning radius with a very small value of radius. Okay, so this will will follow a curvature which is having a some more larger radius. Okay, so both the wheels will negotiate a circle. Okay, so this circle will be negotiated by the wheel. So all the points within the aircraft will start rotating with a varying radius. Okay, so this point will rotate with a radius uh, with a path like this. Okay, so this point will rotate in this circle with a this much radius and what about this point this point will rotate with this much radius okay and in this way all the points will get rotated and here all the points which are at extreme side of the aircraft okay this will make a radius which is the maximum value of radius okay so here you can see this radius is the maximum value of the radius that is capable of taking by the aircraft so what is the significance of this radius this is known as the turning radius so uh, why you are using this turning radius so you suppose if you're having this aircraft parked in front of your house or parked on a ground then the minimum space requirement that is required for turn this aircraft so that is the thing you may you may be understanding the concept if you want to turn the aircraft then the minimum possible area that is required is this much okay so this is clearly visible from the figure so you look at here here you can see all this area will be utilized by the aircraft okay all this area will be utilized by the aircraft for turning if it wants to simply stand here then it have to use this much area only okay so this much area will be utilized by the aircraft for simply standing but what uh, and uh, these areas will be will not be used but in the case of rotating this point will assume a position here like this okay while rotating and uh, after after a while it will go up to this point okay it will be here after a while okay so in this way all these positions will be occupied by the wing time to time so you need all these areas in order to rotate so the radius of such area is known as what the turning radius okay so here it is a turning radius and uh, what is the circling radius so that happens in the air okay so within air what is happening the same aeroplane or the same aircraft will take a turn so at the okay so that you should remember at that time it simply can rotate by its own but still there will be a minimum radius with which the aircraft can turn so it cannot turn beyond that minimum radius so that is a concept because it depends upon the length of the aircraft you suppose if the aircraft is having too much length then it cannot turn very sharply so in order to turn that aircraft you need more space if it is having more length that is by simple logic you can understand so if it's on air then there will be some minimum circling radius okay so that is the significance of this circling radius so uh, there should be proper circling radius this then only you can take a turn on the air so that is the significance of the circling radius so the circling radius and the length of the aircraft are having uh, some rela uh, relations and the, the wheel base of the aircraft is having a relation with the, the turning radius so that is visible from the figure i hope it's clear for you clear related turning radius is circling radius so circling radius air will come turning radius ground will come okay so random depend on the wheel base in the 
വിടുത്തിനെയും അതുപോലെ ലെങ്ത്തിനെയും ഒക്കെ ഡിപെൻഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് സോ ഇതൊക്കെ ബേസ് ചെയ്തിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ എയർപോർട്ട് ഡിസൈൻ ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് അത് മനസ്സിലാക്കാം ഓക്കെ സോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ദ third point that you have discussed it is the speed of the aircraft so here the speed is of two types so one is cruising speed and one is air speed so what is this cruising speed what is this word cruise cruise, cruise means means air navigation okay so you may have uh, well uh, studying the missiles you may have heard about two types of missiles cruise missile and ballistic missile okay in the same way for aircraft also cruising is there means air navigation that's all just uh, cruising speed and air speed are different suppose you are having an aircraft like this okay and it is moving so it is having a speed with respect to the ground okay so there will be a speed with respect to the ground so that speed is known as the cruising speed because the ground is static compared to the moving aircraft so here there will be some velocity uh, just like some 500 km per hour or 800 km per hour in that way it will be having some speed based on the ground that's a cruising speed and what about the air speed here you know there will be air like this it, uh, the air may be moving in this direction nearer to the aircraft and far away to the aircraft the air will be moving by here here or randomly okay so uh, based on this nearby air the velocity of the airport uh, the aircraft can be expressed that means velocity of the aircraft can be expressed with respect to the adjacent wind okay with respect to the adjacent atmospheric wind so definitely it will be less than this okay if a aircraft is moving with 500 km per hour with respect to the ground then with respect to the nearby air component its velocity will be somewhat lesser because you know that wind is also moving okay so the wind or the air component also is moving along with the, this aircraft that you know so definitely if you are taking the relative velocity with which the aircraft is moving with respect to the nearby wind or nearby air component will be somewhat lesser so that velocity or that speed is known as the air speed air speed um cruising speed um enalla vyathyasam ningalku manasilaikanam le cruising speed nu cheyyanal nammal thaale ground il nikkuna oral ee aircraft kaanumbo adinde velocity alle so neram marichu air speed aanengilo adinu chuttulla air aa air move cheyyunnundu alle so aa air inde velocity inde base il nammal endu cheyyunu ee nammade aircraft inde speed express cheyyunu alle so അങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴാണ് അതിന് എയർ സ്പീഡ് എന്ന് വിളിക്കുന്നത് ഓക്കെ സോ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്ത് കഴിയുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാവും ഇതൊരു റിലേറ്റീവ് വെലോസിറ്റിന്റെ കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ആണ് അല്ലെ നമ്മൾ ക്രൂസിംഗ് സ്പീഡിന് ആ സ്പീഡ് ഓഫ് ദ എയർ കോമ്പണന്റ് മൈനസ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമുക്ക് എന്ത് കിട്ടും നമുക്ക് എയർ സ്പീഡ് കിട്ടും ഓക്കെ സോ അത്രയാണ് സ്പീഡിനെ കുറിച്ച് പറയാനുള്ളത് സോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് പറയാനുള്ളത് ഈ സ്പീഡിനെ കുറിച്ച് നമ്മൾ പറയുമ്പോൾ സ്പീഡിന്റെ ബേസിലാണ് നമ്മൾ അതിന്റെ എയർക്രാഫ്റ്റിന്റെ ഷേപ്പ് ഒക്കെ ഡിസൈഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അല്ലെ നിങ്ങൾ സ്ട്രീം ലൈൻ എന്ന് കേട്ടിട്ടുണ്ടാവും അല്ലെ സ്ട്രീം ലൈൻ എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എഫ് എം എൽ പഠിക്കുന്നത് അല്ലെ so and the shape the shape of the aircraft should be streamlined so then only it produce maximum efficiency while it is on air okay so angane nammal adinte shape decide cheyunnathu adinte speed etra venam ennalladinokke depend cheyidana alle nalla speed il povanadhu valare streamlined aayirikanam shape so allathine athra streamlined aayirikanam illa so in this way you have to design the components of the airport by considering the speed okay so the aircraft capacity nu cheyyanu endanu അതാണ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഡിസൈൻ കോമണന്റ് അല്ലെ ഞാൻ ആ ഡിസൈൻ കോമണന്റ് ആദ്യം എഴുതിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ഒന്നുകൂടെ ഇത് എഴുതുന്നില്ല ആ സ്ക്രീന് ഡിലീറ്റ് ആയി പോയി ഓക്കെ നിങ്ങൾ അതൊന്നും ഓർത്ത് വെക്കുക നെക്സ്റ്റ് നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞതാണ് എയർക്രാഫ്റ്റ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഈ എയർക്രാഫ്റ്റ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എന്താണ് നമ്മൾ സൈസ് പഠിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് അല്ലെ എയർക്രാഫ്റ്റിന്റെ സൈസ് പഠിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ കപ്പാസിറ്റി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സൈസ് അല്ല അത് നിങ്ങൾ അങ്ങോട്ടും ഇങ്ങോട്ടും മാറിപ്പോരുത് സോ വാട്ട് ഇസ് എയർക്രാഫ്റ്റ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഹിയർ ഇഫ് യു കൺസിഡർ എൻ ഓട്ടോമൊബൈൽ ദെൻ you be having a capacity just like it can accommodate some 40 number of passengers or some four number of passengers in that way we can express the capacity of that automobile but uh, in the same way if you are expressing the capacity of the aircraft then what you are doing here you have to consider not only the passengers but uh, the passengers plus the luggage or baggage of the passengers plus fuel fuel you have to fill within the aircraft so you have to consider this much items and uh, sometimes there will be cargo It, it 
will not be passengers it will be some goods so you have to consider the weight of the goods also so uh, the goods then the luggage of the passengers baggages then the fuel used all this comes in the category of the capacity of the aircraft okay so uh, here you have to study some terms that's all so the terms i will explain you can understand simply by listening okay so here i am not writing it there is a chance of getting deleted okay so you just understand or uh, just write it down okay so uh, first of all it is the maximum take off weight so what is this maximum take off weight you know at the time of taking off there will be a weight for the aircraft so the weight of the aircraft at the time of taking off so it will consist of the maximum take off weight will consist of fuel weight plus zero fuel weight okay so what is this fuel weight it is the weight of the total fuel that is used at the time of initiation of the flight so fuel weight plus zero fuel weight of the aircraft so what is the zero fuel weight of the aircraft here the full weight of the aircraft minus fuel weight that's all okay so the full initial weight of the aircraft minus fuel weight that is known as the zero fuel weight okay once the airport aircraft is ready with all the passengers all the luggages baggages then cargoes and it's not fueled then the weight of the aircraft that is known as the zero fuel weight okay zero fuel weight plus weight of the fuel will give you the maximum take off weight it is the maximum weight of the aircraft that is possible okay so here now it's the weight of passenger weight of passage uh, weight of luggage baggage then cargo fuel everything is added so that is the maximum possible weight of an aircraft it is the maximum take off weight so at the time of taking off there will be the maximum weight and in the case of landing what will happen at the time of landing the fuel will be consumed okay so some fuel will be there but still most of the fuel will be utilized so here we will call uh, that weight as a maximum landing weight okay so maximum landing weight plus weight of fuel burned that will give you the maximum take off weight okay you may be getting you just write it down on a piece of paper then only you will understand okay so here the maximum landing weight plus weight of fuel burned that will give you the maximum take off weight that's all simply logically you can understand now the zero fuel weight i have discussed it is a empty operating weight plus maximum payload okay so payload means uh, these are the live load uh, that you can say so live load means uh, while well, uh, designing you have seen the live load that means uh, here the passengers the load of the passengers load of the luggages everything will get uh, dynamically varied okay so uh, that type of loading is known as payload okay so in the case of rocket propulsion there will be payload okay once you uh, read uh, the details of the rocket then you will see uh, the payload uh, some uh, 3000 kg in that way they will write so payload means the extra load that is loading on the vehicle in order to make it transported okay so the payload weight plus the empty operating weight will give you the zero fuel weight and if you add the weight of the fuel also then you will get the maximum take off weight and if you subtract the weight of fuel burned then it will give you the maximum landing weight okay that's all so these are the parameters used in the aircraft capacity okay so all these are having significance in the case of runway design okay while designing the runway the design load is taken as the maximum take off weight okay that you should remember because at the time of taking off you have to consider all the loads and at the time of landing you have to consider the action of the weight also here it will be a suddenly applied load so while landing you have to consider the weight plus the impact that is caused by the tires of the aircraft on the ground okay on the runway so in this way you have to design the runway so the design of the runway is coming on the next module so that we will discuss during that day that time anyway now you should understand it's the weight of the aircraft that depends upon the design of the runway so that's all now the wheel configuration i have already explained i hope you understood that just various types of wheel configurations can be tandem wheels then dual wheels then just like the twin wheels then single wheel okay once once you see the picture it will be clear for you i hope last class you first studied that okay we will 
and discuss during the next class. Okay, up to up to this we will discuss now. So I will call the attendance. You just give me your name in the chat box. Okay, Abhinami, Adars, Agas, Akshay, Akshaya. Abhinami, Adars, Agas, Akshay, Akshaya. Okay, now Akshaya, Anjusha, Arya, Asano, Adira. Akshaya, Anjusha. Arya Asano Adira. Okay, la. Aduna Danish Danya Sahala Sarna Sarna. Okay. Tansila Govan Jaram Joshua Asho. Yes. Joshua Asho. Joshua Asho. Asho Fakhan. Okay, Sijin Rishil, Sandra Sandra Shafna. Sijin Rishil, Sandra Sandra Shafna. Okay. Now, Samja Sri Lakshmi Shreya Tadagar Usman. Tadagar Usman. Now, Vibilesh Vibindraj Vismaya Anaga Anubama Muhammad. Vibinil Vibindraj. Okay. Okay, so, Chris. Within that time, I will share the remaining part of the class note also. You have to read the class note and understand. Okay, Agas present. Okay, doubt there, then I will show you. Okay, la. Okay, Anjusha present. 